In this video, we're diving into some of your most intriguing and requested questions from our QSE K12.2 video. Over the last three years, thousands of you have watched our video on the K12.2. We are astounded with how many people this video has helped and we're appreciative of all the positive feedback we received. We just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to watch our video. Now to answer some questions. One of our most asked questions we received was about sub connections and what crossover to use. We touched on how to set the sub crossovers but didn't dive too much deeper. For those asking what crossover to use with a specific sub, my answer is to just use your ears and go with what sounds best. Now, you can get into a situation where you set the crossover too high, say at 125 hertz, and your sub only produces frequencies up to 100 hertz, and all of a sudden you're missing a chunk of the low end. This will be noticeable to trained ears, but could be missed if you don't know what to listen for. In that case, I'd look up the specifications of the sub you're using, and from there you can make a more informed decision. Let's talk a bit now about the order of connections needed to run subs with QSC tops. We try to give out accurate, easy to understand information, but sometimes we miss the mark, like with this comp. With the K.2 series speakers, it actually doesn't matter what order you plug the speakers or subs in. This is because of where the crossover gets applied to the signal. In order to understand this concept more, let's pull up the block diagram provided in the QSC manual. A block diagram shows us the exact path an audio signal can take through the speaker and lets us see where adjustments we make to the settings are applied. Now I know this can look like a lot, but let's just focus on input A to start. First off, we can see the input XLR combo jack here. Once we plug our audio source in, we can see the signal heads in two directions. The branch is notated by the dot here. The signal going down can either branch off to the mic level preamp or head all the way down into the XLR through output. This tells us that the exact signal we plugged into input A comes out of this output with absolutely no changes to the signal. Now, if we go back to the beginning and continue to the right, we see this odd looking broken up portion. This is where the mic versus line setting comes in. If you select mic level for the input, you would be using this path, whereas selecting line level uses this path. As you can see, the big difference here is inserting a mic preamp into the equation, which is why the signal will be so much louder than if you had selected line level. Continuing on, we have a couple bits that show where the LED lights are changing based on the signal, but more importantly, we hit this, which represents the physical gain knob on the back of the speaker. This is the last place we boost the signal before the speaker's internals take over. As we continue following our signal, it now either sums with the other inputs and is sent to the post-gain XLR output, or heads off to the right. Now, as you can see, any changes made to the delay, presets, or DSP settings will be applied to all input signals, and this is the only path the input signal can take to hit the internal amps. DSP stands for Digital Signal Processor, and this is where things like EQ filters, or the magic phrase in this case, the sub crossover is applied. As you can see, there's no way to tap into the signal after the DSP, meaning that no matter what changes you are making at this level, it won't change the signal we can grab from any of the XLR outputs on the speaker. So all that being said, with K.2 series speakers, it does not matter at all the order in which you plug speakers in provided you aren't using the post gain output of the speaker. You could go top to top to sub, sub to sub to top to top, or even top to sub to top to sub. It doesn't matter. What does matter, however, is that you are applying the same crossover to each speaker or sub in the setup. If you are using the K.2 series tops with a sub from a different speaker manufacturer, I would recommend going into your tops first coming out of the through XLR output located directly below the jacks and then into the sub. This is because we know that the signal coming out of the XLR jack is unaltered and won't cause any wonky things to happen. Just because the K.2 series applies the crossover setting after any of the outputs 
doesn't mean all speaker manufacturers will do it that way. You wouldn't be very happy if you ran a signal into your sub that applied a crossover that cuts high end frequencies and then take that same signal and send it to your tops. We got this question from Harry H who asked, Hi, can we attach a Y adapter to both A and B line in? If we do, what happens? Does it get more power or loudness? Or is it not recommended? Please answer. You totally could do this, but I can't really think of any cases where something like this would be necessary. The power and loudness is far more affected by the amplifier in the speaker, which in the case of the QSCs is contained within the unit. All you're doing is sending the exact same signal to two channels and summing them together like that won't give you anything crazy like twice the volume. Ramsey Edwards asked, can it be used for TV sound system and indoor music? Yes, it can but there are gonna be better products at a more friendly price point designed for home theater audio. However, if you're a QSC K.2 series fangirl, or have some extras laying around and wanna do it, just treat your TV like any other audio source you typically amplify through a QSC. First, check the audio outputs on your TV. Some TVs have an eighth inch aux output, some have an optical out, and others will have an RCA output or some combination of those. If your TV has an aux out, it's pretty simple. Just run an aux cable into input three of the speaker. Now, if your TV only has an optical or RCA out, you'll also have to add in an adapter in order to change the optical or RCA cable into an XLR quarter inch or eighth inch cable that works with the QSC. Lastly, if your TV has no audio outputs, there's a good chance that we're working with a smart TV. And normally they have Bluetooth transmitters built in. In this case, you'd need to pair a Bluetooth receiver to your TV and hook it up that way. If you wanna know more about the Bluetooth DI box that we use, click this link here. Barry Dempsey commented, I wanted to know the difference between monitor one and monitor two. The manual was no help. And apparently neither was this video. Everything, really? We do have some stage monitor settings. Probably not gonna be using those scenarios. Probably not gonna be using those scenarios. We definitely skipped over this bit. These presets each represent an EQ filter that is applied to the boxes. Unfortunately, QSC doesn't tell us what exact changes are going on, and the only information officially out there are the descriptions and the manual. These aren't the most helpful, but give us a few clues as to what's going on. The difference between the monitor one setting and the monitor two setting will be that the monitor two setting has some more low end in it. Like I said earlier, QSC does not publish any information about what EQ curves they are applying with these presets. There are tools that allow us to take a peek as to what's going on. I found a blog post breaking down exactly what each preset was doing. Here we can see what is happening to the same audio signal coming out of a K10.2 speaker with the different speaker presets applied, thanks to Joe the Audio Pro from Excellence Marketing. There would be some differences if you were to repeat this test with a K12.2, but here is what monitor one and monitor two's output looks like on the K10.2. You can see that the EQ for monitor one and monitor two differ mainly below 125 Hertz, with there being a significant bump in the low end frequencies on monitor two. For more information on all of the presets, the link to the blog post is in the description below. Moving on to a question about condenser microphones. Is there a setting for the condenser mic? I have a phantom powered AKG 220. The short answer is no. A condenser mic requires phantom power and the K12.2 does not have any built in. You will need to use another device like a mixer that has the ability to give mics phantom power. Sort of in the same vein of questioning, Wendell Carolyn asks, quick question, we are using this without a mixer, a vocalist with a piano. Is there any way to add a slight bit of reverb to the vocal mic? Would this possibly be in the EQ settings? This speaker does not have any built-in effects. EQ can only boost or cut a frequency and will not produce reverb no matter the amount of fiddling you do. You'll need to add another piece of equipment, like a vocal reverb pedal or mixer in order to do this. Doug Johnson asks us a question about input settings. 
I have a vocal in channel A and an acoustic guitar in channel B. Do I go through the setting process, no sub, etc., as you explained? Then, do I have to go back to select channel B and go through the setting process again for the guitar? My acoustic guitar has a very sophisticated onboard PUP system. Is default best for my guitar channel? Most of the settings on the QSD are going to be applied to all of the inputs. The only input specific things you can change are setting whether the input is a mic or line level in the physical gain knob on the back panel. If we take a look at the block diagram again, we can see that settings like delays and presets are applied to each input source in the same way. To finish off, we wanted to address the most commented on item on our original QSC K12.2 video. Why is my speaker cutting out? To answer this question, I had to do a bit of digging around on some audio forums and QSE technical sheets, and it seems like this is a well-known issue among repair techs that work on QSE products. From what I could surmise, QSE K12.2 speakers were plagued with a manufacturing defect that occurred in some speakers made during 2020 and 2021. This issue caused the speaker amp module to fail. QSC responded by introducing firmware 1.2.0, which included a new Protect Mode 4, or PM4, that was designed to protect QSC products from critical thermal failure. This ended up leading to other issues though, such as false triggers of the Protect Mode, or in some cases, the speaker refusing to leave the Protect Mode, essentially bricking it. QSC addressed these problems by updating the chipset for all new speakers made after September 2022 and added a new firmware specific to those chips. Hopefully, this is just a little blip down in quality caused by all the wonderful manufacturing challenges 2020 presented the world with. Our company has run K12.2s since 2017 when they debuted with no problems whatsoever. If you're still running into this issue, make sure the speaker is running on the latest firmware version. If that doesn't fix it though, you'll likely need to get in contact with QSC or the vendor you bought your speakers from about getting a replacement. It's a bit of a pain and will require documentation on your part, but you should be able to get the speaker repaired or swapped under warranty as long as you can prove that the speaker is the problem and not other gear in the equation like faulty XLR cables. All that being said, there is another thing that may be causing this issue. Double check to make sure that you don't accidentally have input one set to mic level when a line level is all that's needed. If you don't have the appropriate input level set, you may be overdriving the speaker and the cuts you are experiencing are from the limiter kicking in to protect the drivers from tearing themselves apart. If you want to read into the expanded version of this problem, check out our blog post linked in the description below. That's all the time we have for questions today. We tried to select a good cross-section of comments that answered the most questions. Let us know in the comments if you think we did that. And if you enjoy videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. We have some really cool videos in the works and have a goal to hit 2,500 subscribers by the end of the year. It would be excellent if you could help with that. Thanks for watching.